All ancient religions of the world, without exception, bring accounts of divine beings descending from the heavens to earth. Monotheism is a very new and recent theological invention in our history. It is curious to notice that the cradle of civilization, Sumer, in ancient Mesopotamia, attributes their creation to various gods, and when we apply this perspective to the best-selling and most well-known book in the world, the Bible, we identify not several gods, but a single one. The question is, why? Many people justify this fact by stating that the Bible is the result of divine intervention and inspiration. However, when we observe the facts themselves, we discover that this is not true. To truly understand and study, we need to distance ourselves from religious dogmatism and theological answers. We need to observe the facts and let them speak for themselves. If we ask any scholar or expert in ancient civilizations or biblical records, they will tell us that the Bible was influenced by Sumerian literature, especially in the texts of Genesis, such as creation and the flood. It is essential to highlight that Sumerian and Akkadian writings are proven to be older than the writing, compilation, and integration of the Hebrew Bible or the Torah. In this sense, if we want to understand the true contact with the divine that early humans had and the creation story they have to tell, we need to observe more closely the evolution of religious thought from that time. In the entire ancient world, people believed in gods who descended from the heavens and created humanity, guiding, teaching, and protecting humans. By reading the Mesopotamian tablets and the oldest mythologies, we discover the interactions with gods for all daily events. People sought blessings for marriages, the granting of healing and physical well-being, and guidance for cultivating the land and caring for animals. The texts suggest a direct relationship between humans and their regional or family gods. Religion held a central place, and nothing was done without divine blessings or approval. The first human civilizations were connected to multiple gods, not a single almighty god. Everything was consecrated. Cultivating the land was an act of veneration to the goddess, Hunting was a display of power and virility that earned a man the trust of the divine. Winds and storms were considered divine punishments, and the plants with healing properties were believed to be gifts from the gods to humanity. While traditional teaching often relates these acts to an ignorance of scientific truths that govern life on earth, the texts reveal the passion with which these actions were performed. Moreover, Mesopotamian mythology, in various passages, shows the precise moment when certain knowledge was bestowed upon humanity by the gods. I know, for us, who are accustomed to the idea of a single god, these ideas are strange and practically absurd. Multiple gods? But then, there must be one single god, right? This is a common doubt. Our modern theology is the result of centuries and millennia of faith in a single god. The creation of Yahweh as a single god incorporates two fundamental ideas, that of a supreme creator and a supreme protector. This means that Yahweh assumes a dual identity to address two different roles or situations. In the ancient cities, in the ancient world, in the city-states that flourished, each city had its god. These gods were present in the daily lives of the people, either through their physical presence in the ziggurats or through divine emissaries. Various people had contact with these gods, but the primary contact was through the priests and kings responsible for the city-states. Thus, the city's god was revered tangibly, with an authoritative and divine presence. Yahweh, the God of the Bible, assumes this identity. The biblical accounts make his physical presence clear. Another characteristic assumed by Yahweh is that of the Supreme Creator. It seems to be an innate psychological need, given our current ideas when we look at the ancient world. There must be a Creator, and Yahweh assumes this characteristic as the beginning of all principles and the prime cause, the driving force of the entire universe. Through Gnostic ideas, for those who enjoy researching in this regard, like myself, we learn about an infinite, ineffable, and unknowable God. This God can be sensed through experiences that go beyond human senses. The most disruptive aspect of knowing the Anunnaki theory and the history of the Sumerians, Mesopotamia, and the entire ancient world is that we discover the idea of a single God as a novelty. The ancient world did not have this notion. In the context of the ancient civilizations, there was no Satan. In fact, there were several. Mauro Biglino explains that the term Satan did not refer to the prince of demons but rather a simple function, which was assumed by various characters, and sometimes under the direct indication of Yahweh. Satan had the typical role of an accuser in the public ministry, acting as an adversary. There is no connection to a spiritualistic demonic entity. This concept was an invention that emerged later. Additionally, it is necessary to observe the Sumerians' idea of how the universe worked and the position of planet Earth in the cosmos. 
The Sumerians believed that the Earth was surrounded by a celestial dome, which represented the sky or the heavens of Anu, also symbolized by An. Below the Earth lay the underworld, guarded by Nergal, the god of the underworld. The underworld was simply beneath the Earth, which, in turn, was beneath the heavens of Anu. The term, inferior, gave rise to the Latin term, infernum, meaning below or down. From, infernum, the term, inferno, in Portuguese, and, infierno, in Spanish, originated, which is equivalent to, hell, in English. This worldview is also found in Greek mythology, for instance, when we encounter the underworld guarded by Hades and the abode of the gods in the sky on Mount Olympus. It is essential to understand that the worldview of the Sumerians, the first civilization in history, also influenced other cultures. In this context, we have already shattered, through the light of knowledge, a significant part of the theology and dogma of the church. We comprehend that there is no Satan, no hell, and consequently, there is no devil, as these are later creations. In this regard, we can easily understand that the doctrine of the church is the accumulation of different ancient religious proposals, which finds its first origin in Sumerian myths but also finds shelter in Zoroastrianism. The story of the good god Ahura Mazda and his enemy, Ahriman. This story is the necessary support for the great invention of transforming Ahriman into the devil and the biblical Satan, offering him the underworld, the fire of hell, and for the good god, the heavens, Olympus, or the sky and the heavens of Anu. Thus, the sky of Anu is poured into the invented Yahweh, while the evil god, Ahriman, is given the title of opponent, of Satan. An excellent confirmation of this idea can be observed when we understand that Anu, the personification of the heavens, was pictographically represented by a star, as explained by Mauro Biglino, or even before Biglino, in the 19th century, George Smith explained that Anu was represented by the Maltese cross. The Maltese cross was the symbol of Christian knights during the Crusades. Is it still necessary for more evidence of the great deception constructed by the doctrine of the church? Well, I know it is. But I also know that, up to this point, several people who are watching must be outraged and directing sweet words of love towards me. Of course, I am being ironic. The light of knowledge, it must be said, is capable of dissipating the veils of ignorance. And as a popular saying goes, the worst blind person is the one who doesn't want to see. How many do you know who refuse to see? Returning to the Sumerian worldview, it is important to clarify that Enlil personified the winds and the force that separated the sky of and from the earth. Thus, between the celestial dome and the earth, there existed the so-called Lil, the air, which separated the Anki, that is, the sky and the earth. It was also referred to as an Enlil. This was the Sumerian worldview. In this sense, there was no creator of everything, no single god, no hell, no Satan or Lucifer. Just as there was no Messiah or Savior, 